Hey guys, this presentation is on somatic symptom disorder, the diagnosis, history, examination, investigations, and treatment. So commonly a presentation for these patients, for example, is that you're a doctor and you've just started your first position as a general medical practitioner in a large practice. You are told by the receptionist that you have to see Mrs. Smith, who is regarded as an impossible patient. She attends the practice at least twice a week and has been seen by every doctor in the practice for at least the last 10 years. Mrs. Smith has then complained of a whole variety of symptoms over the years, but no serious medical condition has ever been diagnosed. Describe how you would assess and manage Mrs. Smith's case. So in terms of your provisional diagnosis, somatic symptom disorder would be your provisional diagnosis. However, Somatic symptom disorder is a diagnosis of exclusion, excluding organic and psychiatric illnesses. Organic causes include irritable bowel syndrome, fibromyalgia, and drug-related diseases. Psychiatric illnesses include anxiety such as panic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, OCD, illness anxiety disorder. Conversion disorder, psychoses, factitious disorder such as malingering or making it up. So just comparing some of the differentials with our provisional diagnoses. So illness anxiety disorder versus somatic symptom disorder. Illness anxiety disorder, the patient doesn't actually complain of somatic symptoms. However, in somatic symptom disorder, they do complain about the symptoms. Conversion disorder versus somatic symptom disorder. So for conversion disorder, you they focus on the distress that a particular symptom causes. Whereas the somatic symptom disorder presents with a loss of function of a particular body part and doesn't really complain of the distress. In terms of the DSM-5 criteria for somatic symptom disorder, these are the criteria. First, you need more than one somatic symptoms that are distressing or a result of a significant disruption, disruption of daily life. Two, they need to have excessive thoughts, feelings, or behaviors related to the somatic symptoms or associated health conditions as, manifestate, as manifested by disproportionate and persistent thoughts about seriousness of one's symptoms, persistently high level of anxiety about health or symptoms, excessive time and energy devoted to these symptoms or health concerns, and persistently symptomatic for more than six months. You must specify if it's predominantly pain or just persistent symptoms for more than six months. In terms of the history, you want to ask about the symptoms based on the DSM-5 criteria and exclude any other psychiatric illnesses. You also want to go into risk factors for psychiatric issues as well as a risk assessment. So symptoms, you can ask questions like, do you worry about your health a lot? How are these symptoms affecting you? And is it right to say that despite all these investigations, nothing wrong has been identified? In terms of risk factors, these can be divided in past medical history, past psychiatric, family history, medications, allergies, drugs, alcohol, and psychosocial. And risk assessment is assessing their risk to themselves, to others, their reputation, and any suicidal idea ideation. On examination, you want to do a mental state exam, the somatic symptom scale H, and a system, systematic examination of a patient's somatic complaints to ensure that there is no underlying organic pathology. So this is a somatic symptom scale. You have five potential answers, not at all, a little bit, somewhat, quite a bit, and very much. And you have this question. During the past seven days, how much have you been bothered by at least one of the following problems? Stomach or bowel problems, back pain, pain in your arms and legs or joints, headache, chest pain or shortness of breath, dizziness, feeling tired or having low energy, trouble sleeping. And an SSS8 score is given. In terms of investigations, you can think about doing a thyroid stimulating hormone just to look for hypo or hyperthyroidism, a full blood count to exclude anemia, alcoholism, urine toxicology for any drugs, urine catecholamine for if you suspect pheochromocytoma, pheochromocytoma screen. In terms of management, there is no pharmacological therapy. It's primarily dependent on psychotherapy because there is no underlying disease with this patient. Medically, however mentally, um, there is, so you would be more inclined to use psychoeducation, CBT, vocational support, group therapy, drug and alcohol cessation, healthy food and lifestyle changes such as exercise. 
Going further into CBT, oh, psychoeducation, it's important to acknowledge that their somatic complaints are distressing, and psychological interventions may help. You want to involve the family to maximise the chances of psychotherapy working. In terms of cognitive behavioural therapy, this is first line for somatic symptom disorder. You want to define the goals initially. Make the somatic symptoms less distressing to the patient. You have the ABC model, where you explore the actions, antecedent, beliefs and consequences. You want to analyse questions surrounding what caused a patient to be distressed, why they think they are sick, what evidence they have, the consequences, and ask the patient to think about what was negative about these consequences, how they can work to reduce the burden of their symptoms. It'd be good to recommend them to keep a diary in order to record their symptoms, severity and what they felt. You also want to te teach coping skills such as coping with the distress of one's symptoms, relaxation techniques to reduce stress.